an engine is turning over at an angular velocity of 2100 RPM. Express this angular velocity in radians per minute. So 2100 RPM stands for revolutions per minute, per one minute. To convert this into radians, we need to know that one revolution is exactly 2 pi radians. Now we convert this, 2100 times 2 pi is 4200 pi radians per minute. Converting from revolutions per minute to radians per minute is just one revolution is 2 pi radians. These are both angular velocities so that you don't have to try to get into inches or feet or miles or anything. So converting from angular velocity in revolutions per minute to angular velocity in radians per minute is all very simple to do with the fact that one revolution is 2 pi radians. Solve the problem. Rotates the pulley of radius 7 centimeters, rotates 9 times in 32 seconds. So this information is revolutions per second. Rotating 9 times is 9 revolutions. So they give you revolutions per second, and they want you to find the angular velocity. That would be radians per second. So this problem is converting from revolutions per second to radians per second. This is not a linear distance problem. And so the fact that the pulley of radius 7 centimeters, the 7 centimeters doesn't actually play into this problem. Because converting 9 revolutions in 32 seconds is no more than knowing one revolution is 2 pi radians and the revolutions cancel the 9 times 2 is 18 let's see the 2 goes into 32 6 9 pi over 16 radians per second and the 7 centimeters doesn't come into play centimeters is a linear distance so only if you're trying to get to miles per hour or some kind of distance per time do you need any kind of distance. If you're going from revolutions to radians, you don't need any distance. Just how many revolutions. All right, great. A wheel is rotating at 3 radians per second. So we have radians per second. A wheel has 73 inch diameter to the nearest foot per minute. And we're trying to get to foot per minute. Okay, this tells me, first off, we're not just going from radians to revolutions. We're going to linear distance feet. The key to this problem, one of the nicest ways I've found to solve it, is to know that one circumference equals one revolution or two pi radians. Now why this is so useful, I could better two out of that, why this is so useful is because a circumference is a distance. So knowing that one circumference is one revolution or is two pi radians allows us to go from revolutions or radians to an actual distance. So we have to work out, let's do two pi radians equals one circumference which is 2 pi r and we know r is half of the diameter actually let's do it this way circumference is either 2 pi r or it's pi d so both of these facts can be used depending on if you're given radius or if in this case you're given diameter this one's a nicer one to use so we get 2 pi radians one full revolution is 73 pi inches. So we are taking the 73 inches and plugging it in for D. 73 inches times pi, 73 pi inches. 
that conversion factor was the one that was missing. So now we can go to what we have. We know it's three radians per second. And we can start converting, for example, two pi radians in 73 pi inches. That will get us to inches per second. But they want feet per minute, so we need some more conversion factors. Inches. I know 12 inches in one foot. The reason why I'm putting the inches on the bottom is so I can cancel these other inches on top. We are now in feet per second. We want feet per minute. One more ought to do it. 60 seconds, one minute. This allows us to cancel these seconds out. Now the units that are left are feet per minute. Beautiful, that's what they wanted. So we go to our calculator. Now one issue with your calculator, with the multiple divisions in this problem, specifically we have a divide by 2, there's a pi down there, there's a 12 down there, is if you're not careful with either use of parentheses or using your equal sign on your calculator multiple times, you're going to get the wrong answer. So what I would do on this problem, and let me double check the answer, they do not have any decimals, this must work out nicely, 3 times 73 times pi times 60, and I can hit equals, it's 41,280.52747, etc. Divided by. Now I'm going to divide by first off the 2. Divide by 2 and I'm going to hit equals. Now it's at 20,000. Now I'm going to divide by the pi. Divide by pi equals. Now it's at 6,570. Now I'm going to divide by 12. Divide by 12 equals. And I get 547.5. So this all gives me 547.5, and this is feet per minute. And now let me double check. It says to the nearest foot, so we want to round to the nearest foot. Okay, that's what I needed to know. So we would round, because of the 0.5, we would round up and call this 548 feet per minute minute. Alright, now there's a completely different approach to this problem and that's using a formula. Oh, let's see, there we go. It's using this formula, it's V, the velocity, equals R omega. V velocity would be like a feet per minute. R omega, omega would be an radians per minute. So if you can find the radians per minute, you can plug it into this formula and find the velocity. And then converting, for example, from inches per second to feet per minute would still have to be done. Now there's, it's a great formula and the reason why I don't use it is because I know circumference much better. And conceptually, knowing one circumference is exactly one revolution is more likely to be something you remember in the stress of a test. Whereas V equals R omega, you, then you're like, okay, a new formula, wait, what's omega? They didn't give it, or did they give it? And I'd just rather avoid that issue by doing something that's a little more basic. A wheel with a 15-inch diameter is turning at the rate of 48 revolutions per minute. To the nearest inch per minute, what is the linear velocity of a point on the rim? In this problem, we are converting. We have revolutions per minute, and we're converting this to inches per minute. So we're going from angular velocity, revolutions per minute, to linear velocity, inches per minute. This is where it's useful to use the fact that one circumference equals one revolution. And the circumference formula is either 2 pi r, or in our case, pi d, since we're given diameter. Often they give you the diameter here, but if they give you a radius, it's nice to know both of these. So we know 1 pi d equals 1 revolution. 
D being 15 inches, 15 pi inches equals one revolution. This conversion factor is the key to going from, you know, on this problem for this wheel, revolutions to inches. And that's how we're going to get from angular velocity to linear velocity. So now let's go to our problem of 48 revolutions per minute. And we can convert knowing one revolution is 15 pi inches. The revolutions will cancel and we will end up with inches per minute to the nearest inch per minute. This is just a calculator problem now. So plugging this into our calculator gives us a decimal, but they ask for the nearest inch. That decimal is Oops. Two, two, six, one, point nine. I'm missing a six in there. Inches per minute, and they want the nearest inch. So this would be two, two, six, two inches per minute. 